Good morning, guys. Bright and early here. Tool crews here checking in in Singapore. Good morning, Tuan Chan. Good morning. And today we're going to be doing a fun cycling route over to the airport yes. and checking out all the beautiful sights along the way. And we're starting here over in Marina Bay. We're by the Merlion. And yeah, starting our ride in this beautiful location. And we're going to be cycling to some other beautiful places along the way. The Eastern Park and there's a dinosaur cycling road. We're pretty excited uh, to be doing some more cycling rides here in Singapore. Today we're going to be riding on these Mobot folding bikes, so they're kindly lending us some awesome loaner bikes while we're here in Singapore. And we're also going to be riding with some other local YouTubers Yo. here in Singapore, so they're helping guide us today. Alright, let's go. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> so big thanks, and we're all on folding bikes today. Alright. So. This is my rental bike and these are their bikes. Let's take a quick look before we start. What is this, a local brand? Yes, Garcia. Ah, uh, Garcia. Yeah. Okay. In the Hokkien word, it means uh, bicycle. Oh, okay. Garcia. Ah, yeah. very cool. I thought it was like Italian or something yeah, yeah, at first. It's, a, it's the same sound. Okay. Italian. And we got a Java here. All right, three, two, one. Let's go! So actually, in our last video yesterday, this is where we finished our ride. So it's pretty cool to be continuing from where we last left off, but we're getting a nice different kind of view right now because last night was more the sunset kind of vibe with a lot more people. This is the, the morning vibe, so a lot less people out and pretty nice atmosphere actually. It's good for like running. We've seen a few runners here, also a few cyclists getting out starting their ride. And yeah, it's a lot nicer for cycling because you don't have to worry about like running into as many people. So we're going to be starting with this sort of similar scenery, but then we're going to be continuing east, which is a direction we haven't gone yet on our rides. And if you haven't seen it yet, we'll be linking our full playlist here for our videos here in Singapore. So we'll do a playlist for all of our general videos. We'll also do a separate playlist for all of our cycling videos. And we're also going to be visiting some bike shops here, doing some bike shop tours. So we'll have some separate playlists for all of those videos, whatever you're interested in watching but I imagine you're interested in the cycling videos if you're, you're watching today's video. Today we're kitted out. Yesterday we were wearing our casual clothes and when you do a longer ride on the, the folding bikes, I usually feel a little bit more comfortable wearing the, the cycling clothes just because you get the extra like comfort from wearing the cycling shorts. And yeah, you can wear normal clothes like our riding buddies today, they're wearing normal clothes, but we did that yesterday, we're taking a break today and we're kitted up. And tomorrow we're gonna be fully kitted up in our like professional gear and also riding the road bikes. So doing a real big cycling ride tomorrow. We're gonna be doing about a, I think it's 120K around the full island. So stay tuned for that upcoming video as well. And yeah, it's really surreal just like riding in this nice downtown area with these like just beautifully maintained, nice wide open pedestrian areas that not just for walking, but also for like cycling as long as you go like at not too fast of a speed and also just riding through all these massive buildings around us. It actually gives a little bit of extra shade. So I imagine it helps cool things down a little bit more. So we're starting. It's about 8 a.m. here as we start today's ride. So a lot of people in Singapore, they like to start their ride super early while it's still dark because that's when things are still pretty cool. We've gotten a lot of warnings from you guys saying like, be careful, Singapore is really hot. You got to stay hydrated. And honestly, I can say it with certainty that it's been way hotter in Da Nang, Vietnam for the last like few months compared to like what the weather is right now. Like it's decently hot here, but uh, we've been prepared. <laughs> I'll leave it like that. So actually the weather's feeling a little bit cooler right now, which is nice. It's also nice, maybe it has to do with all the extra shade spots that might have something to do with it. But yeah, today's video is gonna be a longer ride video, so I'm talking a lot more now in the introduction, but there may be some other parts later in the video where I can't just keep talking the whole time, so keep that in mind. But if there's something interesting we come across, I'll definitely stop and take a moment to talk about it. But yeah, I can't ask for much of a better view to start the ride. Chun Chan's been enjoying her time in Singapore so far. Yes. Yes. What do you think about cycling in Singapore? Uh, 
Uh, lots of cyclists? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lots of lots of folding bikes. Yeah, apparently there's been a folding bike boom in Singapore since COVID happened. Uh, before COVID, there weren't too like cycling was decently popular but not that big and folding bikes especially wasn't that big. But Mobot, um, our folding bike sponsor, has been has told us that like they just had a huge increase in demand and popularity for their folding bikes since COVID happened because apparently during the lockdowns people could only go out to exercise or go running or go cycling so because of that a lot more people got interested in cycling and a lot of people chose folding bikes because there's limited space here in Singapore so the apartments the living space is a lot smaller so having a bike that folds down really compact is a big priority for a lot of people they don't have the space for like a full road bike or mountain bike so that makes sense Really cool to be in this kind of environment and experiencing it ourselves. Ah, it's the Apple stores in here. Oh, this is it. Oh, okay. Be a club, and then turn it into Apple. Ah, interesting. Yeah, so we chose the like worst possible time to come to Singapore. It's the biggest event of the year, the F1 race, and all the hotels are fully booked. Every, all the prices are way higher than normal, and. Certain roads are closed, but it's okay. I think it's actually gonna be a unique experience being able to film how it looks like during that time. So the nice thing is they have this elevator here, so we can easily ride up, get to the bridge to go across. Yeah, check out this massive, it's almost like a stadium. They have all the, the bleachers here on the side. Gotta be careful I don't run into this. And yeah, all the all these big preparations preparing for the event should be really cool. We don't actually have tickets, but we're going to try and walk around during the, the night of one of the events. It's a night race here and hopefully we can get pretty close to the action. So they said this bridge is called the, the Helix Bridge. I'm, I'm still learning all the proper attraction names, but yeah, pretty cool. It's nice that they have the elevator for easy access and you can bring your bikes on there as well. That's another really cool thing we've been liking about Singapore is just how they have like access or mobility access for everyone. So for walkers, pedestrians, families with babies, strollers, cyclists and yeah, disabled people, of course. So great place for all people. Oh, cool. So you see this like a uh, sailing boat? Yeah. There's like a cafe up there, right? Yeah, and a pool, infinity pool. Yeah. A lot of people go and take pictures. But you need to be a hotel guest to use yeah. the pool, right? Uh, you used to, you, you'd be able to visit as a guest, outside guest. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just have to pay. But it's just too popular now. <laughs> so this is the unfortunate thing here is there's lots of closures that are making our route a little unexpected. <laughs> we have a, our first mechanical. <laughs> okay, luckily that was a quick fix. Just her, her chain got jammed and just popped it right back in place. I was really worried that she had a flat tire for a second. <laughs> she has a talent for getting flat tires. No, what did you do? Since moving to Vietnam, I haven't had a single puncture, but Tung Chan has had how many punctures? Uh, three and four. Three or four. <laughs> We're both riding the same bike, the same tires. Yeah. I, I used to ride more than her, but now she rides more than me. Maybe that's it. So yeah, we're looping back over this way since that road was closed over there. So I think they're also filming their own video today. And I'll leave that link down below in the description once it's finished, so you can go check it out. I think they're going to be interviewing me, so we'll be discussing a few interesting questions. And check this out. We've got some rowing going on here. That's pretty cool. There's the Ferris wheel off in the distance. And yeah, just check out this nice, awesome wide path. We're going here under the bridges. Really nice, cool breeze right now, too. What's this? Active garden. Oh, wow. Like that's not a 
kids playground that's more of an adult playground that's really cool so actually cycling right now by the gardens by the bay area another really popular tourist attraction here but i don't think you can get too close to there by bicycle you have to to walk to go in we're going to be going there a separate time filming a video there that guy's grooving <laughs> and this massive like glass structure you can see that we're riding by right now that's a really popular like garden area, like geodome. And we've been wanting to come here for like two years. Okay. Yeah, before COVID, we were talking with Mobot to try and plan a trip here. But then COVID happened and we couldn't go back to Vietnam. I couldn't go to America and we didn't want to get separated. So we needed to stay in Japan and work for a little longer. And then last year we moved to Thailand, but still we couldn't come to Singapore. So. Yeah, we've been waiting a long time to, to come on this trip. So we decided it's a good time. Finally, Singapore's open. There's no, like, restrictions. No restrictions, no masks. Right. So yeah, this is just a short trip to get experienced with, like, the cycling culture here and where things are. And next time we'll plan a more organized trip where we can stay a little longer. Here we go, going over another bridge here. Does this bridge have a name? Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot of boats parked out here right now. Check this out. And then over here on the left side, we got another awesome view. This is so awesome. They got this nice, just protected bike lane that you can ride around, run around, get some good exercise in, go for a walk even. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice to ride on a like protected bike path again. Okay. And on a weekday morning, you can get less crowded. On a weekend, it'll be very crowded here. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can imagine. It's a lot of like casual yeah, people and families too, right? Family, yeah. yeah. That's the good and bad thing about these kinds of paths. It's nice, but when it's very crowded, it can be more difficult to use. plan is to have a this type of park like around the island. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm sure it'd be a very popular tourist attraction too for like people traveling. Yeah. yeah, we've been really impressed with the the bike infrastructure here so far. Like most every road has a, at least a, a sidewalk yeah. that you can ride on. Like, the sidewalk was, was always there. Yeah. But the cycling path, the shared path like, was accelerated in the past couple of years because of COVID. Oh, okay. <laughs> so a lot of those are pretty brand new. The, oh. the nicer, wider ones, right? Oh, yeah, the nicer, wider ones, and they, or the ones that they actually redo the work on it. So we're continuing along the path here and just going through this awesome, beautiful nature. Again, all the tree cover. I think Singapore, the Singaporean government has some kind of like greenery program or quota for like each area that they have to meet. So there's all these parks, all these green areas, and we're going over this awesome other bridge here and Great engineering design here. You can see we've got the separated walking path so they can walk safely. We can cycle comfortably in our own lane. And always good to keep them separated if you can. Really cool how they have all these parks connected. So I believe this is called the Park Connector Network. We're going over this overpass right now, over this main road. So all the main parks here are connected with this new network. And he was telling me that before they had a decent amount of like sidewalks and paths, but recently during the COVID program, like developing more cycling infrastructure became a big priority. So a lot of places were expanded upon or better maintained or like just new places were built. And so that's why they have all this, like how awesome is this? Like, I don't want to rag too much on Vietnam because we are enjoying our time there. We're enjoying the cycling there, but it's a completely different experience being able to ride safely away from cars, away from traffic. And just, especially for like kids, families, like new cyclists, this is a great place to like build your confidence. Call you Michi Ina. Yeah, it reminds us of our like cycling trip in Taiwan where they had all the nice cycling paths and good cycling infrastructure. So what is this path called exactly? 
I saw the PCN on the yeah. road. PCN, is that the name? Yeah, it stands for Park Connector. A Park Connector Network? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Well. Yeah, so all the, all the big parks, they're connected by this yeah, kind so of... Not only parks, but even in, in the heartlands. Yeah. So all around the, in the housing estate or in other areas of the city. Yeah, whenever you see the word PCN, it means it will lead to somewhere that is in the park. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we noticed during our ride yesterday, like we cycled by a lot of apartment complexes that like they just had the bike lane right next to it. They had a lot of like exercise equipment and parks and like basketball courts. Yeah. So it seems like a great place to like live for families or for like people who want to commute by bike because uh, you don't really have to enter the road at all. You can you can get anywhere by some kind of safe, like protected bike lane anyway. The only thing discarding Jeff is the weather. Okay. So sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's wet. Yeah, yeah. So you can be caught in the rain, like. But today, I think we are pretty safe. Yeah, riding in the rain can be pretty discouraging. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also impressed with like just all the grass. <laughs> like they have to cut all this <laughs> and maintain it. Yeah, Singapore. They call it Garden City. So basically, this city is like a garden. Yeah. That's what they had in mind. Yeah. And you can just imagine how much it's right. maintaining. Yeah, I imagine it's a pretty big maintenance budget. Are there any rules with like the the parks like with like eating in public or like barbecuing and that no. kind of stuff? Okay. Everything's okay? There are barbecue pits here where you can book. And even camping, like you can't just here's a nice spot, I want to camp over here. Right. Uh, they're all designated place for camping and then you have to apply for a permit online because they don't want people to be staying you know, just illegally everywhere. Right. So you can do a, a lot of things, you just need to go through the yeah, proper yeah, process. Yeah. And it's all not difficult, it's just all online. Yeah. Yeah, I've liked the, a lot of things are just really well organized and simplified here. Like, for example, using the train, we could just oh. touch our credit card. Yeah, yeah, we didn't yeah. need to buy a, yeah. a pass. The vending machines, you can also just use your yeah, credit yeah. card, which is nice. Yeah, I used to never, when I lived in America like 10 years ago, I never carried cash. Oh. I just always used my credit card for everything. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but then when I moved to Japan, oh, okay. only cash. So only cash. Oh. All right, guys, we're turning off the path here and we're taking our first little rest stop. Actually, uh, Tung and I haven't eaten anything yet, so we're gonna stop here and get some snacks. Looks like there's a bike shop here. Let's take a quick look. KH Cycle, I got some nice Scott bikes here, but looks like they're closed right now. We're still a little bit early on today's ride. Yeah, a little bit early, but oh, isn't this a nice, refreshing sight? all the convenience stores. So depending on where you are in Vietnam, there are a decent amount of convenience stores if you're in a big city. But in Da Nang, where we live, there's barely any convenience store. So I really miss having these on our ride so we can stop and get some drinks and snacks. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And yeah, there's a bunch of 7-Elevens in Japan, of course, and in Thailand when we were there, and they've got all the sports drinks here, ready to go. I wish we had 7-Elevens in Da Nang. Unfortunately, we don't. But yeah, we've also got the, the Meiji chocolate milk. We're not ready for that right now. We'll get that at the end of the ride, but uh, so happy to see that again. And we got some water. We should get some of that. Pokari Sweat, a little bit expensive. $2.20 for this smaller size. Right, here we go. What do we get? Pokari sweat, okay. our favorite drink, and? What is it? Red bean? Not red bean. They don't have red bean bread. A pumpkin, okay. Pumpkin. We've got pumpkin bread and? What? Taro? Hokkaido cream and raisin. Oh, red. Yeah. Is red bean not so popular in Singapore? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Azuki, popular, red bean? Uh, probably not in convenience store. You like red bean? Oh, it's one of our favorite. Ah, do you like the Chinese style, the steam bun red yes, bean? Yes, yeah? yes, oh, yes. Okay. Oh my, yes. <laughs> Anything red bean? All right, snack time is over. It's bathroom time and this place is really nice. You get a proper rest area. They've got some restaurants here, the bike shop as well. So if you come a little later in the day, you'll have more options. And yeah, all the food here in Singapore just looks really good. We've had good meal after good meal after good meal. So yeah, we're going to continue on here. You want to check out the cyclist bar? Uh, yeah, we'll take a quick look around it. So apparently there's another cool attraction here called the cyclist park they've got a few little like skill sections so 
we're gonna go check that out. I'm really glad we have these guys here to guide us on these places we probably would have missed if we were just riding by ourselves straight down this path. Oh, they got some squirrels here too. That's a rare sight. Are squirrels pretty common here in yeah, Singapore? Yeah. yeah. Especially in Nepal. Okay. So if you're watching from like America, you're probably like, ah, oh, it's a squirrel, no big deal. But they're actually pretty rare in Asia, but apparently pretty common here in Singapore, which is cool. Here we are on the skills course. <laughs> yeah, it's probably better to separate and go at our own paces. Ooh. Oh man, that's not a that's not a smooth pump track. <laughs> that's a pretty rough one. That's fun though. Yeah. What's this? The skills lane. Ah, okay. This is like to practice going over the like the logs and stuff on the, the mountain bike trails. That's cool. <laughs> Oh. Woo. Woo. Uh, Tunshan Josie, nah. that's about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the cycling park. I got a few little pump tracks and oh, they got some bumps here. Yeah, I think it's a skills kind of course to to prepare you for like other obstacles you might face. I think that was my first like concrete pump track I've ever been on. <laughs> and here we go. We're going to continue on back on the main trail. This is the, the bike shop we passed earlier. That's cool, they have the, the pump outside, so you can use that if you need a, a pump. They've got the drinking fountain there, so water access. Okay, there is actually a sign here for the cyclist park, so hopefully you don't miss it if you're coming out here yourself. And yeah, just, I've been mostly filming straight, but this whole time, we have this nice view off to our side here of the ocean. All these massive ships here just parked. What a cool area. And they have some different places like where you can have a picnic or a barbecue, like you can rent the barbecue pit. It's kind of funny after living over here for a while, you learn to really appreciate the, the cloudy days, <laughs> more so than the sunny days. We're having some really nice weather today. Nice and cool. Coco Ine. So this is one of the areas it's okay to like put the tent out yep. and camp. If you want to set it up, it's fine. Right. Like anywhere, but if you want to stay overnight, yeah. you need a special right. permit. Yeah. Okay. Wake Park. Yep. Now this looks like a cool sport I'd like to try. I need to work on my upper body strength first. <laughs> oh, that's cool. They got all the jumps, everything. Uh, Tunshan's never seen this before, so yes. she doesn't know what it looks like. So we'll have to show her some videos later. She said, it's just, there's a lot of obstacles. What do you do? <laughs> Those are jumps. So it looks like this is a popular food destination at the night time. We're gonna have to come back here for a night ride maybe. Is most of the course lit up? Like there's lights on the course here. Yes, everything's on. So even at night, it's very vibrant. Okay. We've seen a lot of like rollerbladers as well. Is that pretty popular in Singapore? Well, more popular like uh, about some. 20 years ago, recently not so much. Yeah, I, I never saw it in Japan <laughs> because it's illegal. Oh, like oh. you can't do it on the the street because oh, really? it's not like a registered vehicle. Ah, so and you got to play in a park or, or in an arena or something. Like yes, that? but there's no parks like that <laughs> in Japan. Okay. So the places where people can do it is very, very, very limited because technically you need like a, at least a good quality brake to ride a vehicle on the roads in Japan. Ah. So also technically skateboarding on the road is illegal. Because I, I thought skateboarding is quite a big thing there. Yes, it is, but... Like this they will do in a... Yes, the... Oh! Skate park. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So they'll... Skateboarding is popular in Japan, but they usually go to like a designated skate park. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of signs like near like the shopping malls, like that'll say like no skateboarding mm. here. So they try and limit like where you can do it on the sidewalks as well. We're gonna go check out Tunshan's favorite place. Fishing spot. Here we go guys, you can, if you wanna go fishing in Singapore. I want to stay here. This is the place to do it. I want to stay here, fish me up. <laughs> she wants to stay here, only here. Okay, she can camp over there. 
you can live there and come fishing every day. <laughs> yeah. You like fishing? Good. Uh, she loves fishing. Fish. Fish. Turns out saw fish. And actually, a lot of these people seem to be coming out on their folding bikes, like bringing their fishing setups here. We moved here. We moved here <laughs> just to go fishing. This is our new favorite spot. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, a lot of these people come out here by bicycle too. So our good luck is starting to come to a bit of an end here. <laughs> We're getting a little bit of rain, but this is bearable. Like this kind of light rain, not a problem. And luckily on our folding bikes, we've got some fenders. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't have any <laughs> on his, but he's okay. He's used to the rain. And if this is all the rain there's gonna be today, not a problem. But I guess this is one of the common occurrences here if you're living in Singapore. Is it just randomly starts raining all the time, especially later in the afternoon. That's another reason why people like their morning rides because it rains less often in the morning. Actually cooling things down even more. So enjoying the cooling, what the cool weather here. So this is our first like light crossing in a long time. And so we're crossing over here. I think we're connecting to a different part of the trail. And you see that dinosaur sign there? That's another place that we're gonna reach at the end of today's ride. Uh, it's a nice little like cycling attraction where they have some dinosaurs along the trail. So that's one of the highlights that we're looking forward to. So here we are actually the, the dinosaur road or the Changi Jurassic Mile, I guess is the correct name, is right here. So we're just a few hundred meters away and... <laughs> oh, neat dater, neat dater. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I guess this is about, yeah, one mile stretch here and we got the kind of brown pavement and we're going to be passing through here. There'll be some dinosaurs along the way. This is actually right next to the airport. So we saw little glimpses of this when we were leaving the airport to go to our hotel when we arrived. Oh, so here we go. Ah, oh, there's no net before? <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to pretend I know the name, the correct name of these dinosaurs. I'll just say, oh, look at this dinosaur. I think I know this one. This is Stegosaurus. <laughs> so apparently this was a, a very popular tourist attraction during COVID times and it was like impossible to, to navigate through here. There were just so many families that were coming down here. And there's also another cafe up here. I was curious about it when we were leaving the airport. It's called Hub and Spoke. So I thought it might be like a cycling kind of cafe and turns out that's the case. So we're heading over that way. We're going to get some lunch or brunch or breakfast or whatever, whatever it is, what time it, it's kind of breakfast lunch right now. So yeah, brunch is appropriate. Here we go. I got the, the dinosaur names so I can remember my elementary school <laughs> lessons. I think that's the last time I had to think about these names. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, we gotta get a picture. Picture time. Oh no! <laughs> Tunchan has a good dinosaur impression. Yes, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Cafe time. Don't feed the dinosaurs. We'll feed ourselves. Oh, they got the egg. That's cute. <laughs> so here we are. This is actually the airport, a part of the airport. It's a pretty massive airport. There's a, a bunch of different terminals connected by like buses and uh, shuttle train. So unfortunately, we'll be coming back here in a few days. Our time in Singapore is passing way too quickly. I think we're definitely going to have to come back. We've been having an awesome time here and next time we're going to have to come back for a longer trip. This is really cool though that they have this path that you can just go through the airport here. So I think technically if you flew in with like a folding bike and your like luggage is transportable, you could just ride straight from the airport, get to the town on the bike path. 
That was dangerous. That section was really slippery, geez. We both almost fell down. Don't ride on the metal grates in the rain. And oh wow, they also have bike parking for the airport. So I guess maybe some people do come here by bike. Maybe it's the staff though. Actually, this is exactly where we arrived. We came out one of these gates and we took the, the shuttle bus to the other terminal. That's crazy. So if you watched our first arrival video, you might recognize this area when we came out to get on the bus. And the sun is out now. Oh wow. You really feel it after the, the rainstorms too and the, the clouds. So the sun is beaming out now. It's getting pretty hot, so a nice time to stop and take a break at the cafe. Okay, here we are, 50 meters. 50 meters to go. Bicycle rental, dining, showers, toilets. Wow, they got showers too. I think we're gonna go over here. This looks nice and open. Also in the shade. Cool little place. So we got the, the shop here and little garden here. Hub and Spoke Cafe, let's see what we got on the menu. Thanks. So Tung just made a new best friend. Yes. The staff here is a Vietnamese lady yes. and they've been talking it up. She got a new friend, she got invited to her house in Vietnam. <laughs> so I guess they're working in Singapore now uh, with their husband and then they're gonna go back and retire in Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnamese so kind. So kind, so yeah. talkative. Yeah. Yoku <laughs> So friendly. Yeah. All right, so we're just waiting for our food to arrive. We ordered some more traditional local kind of dishes. They had some international dishes as well, but we figure while we're here, we should eat some more local food. And wait, what is this? Moonbean. A moonbean drink? Yeah. Okay, so this is my dish here. I got the chicken curry. And Tung, what is her dish called? Mi rubus. Mi rubus. Mi rubus. And what did you guys get? Uh, I got a laksa here. Uh huh. It's also a local favorite laksa. Laksa. So it's got some coconut milk. Ah. Yeah. Okay. We have to try that later. Miro as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good choice. Same yes. as Tung. <laughs> Don't copy me. All right. What do you say in Singapore before you eat? Like let's eat, or do you have a phrase? No. No. Just eat. No. Yeah. We just. Eat. So yeah. It's not so much a formality. Okay. Well, we can follow what you do. <laughs> ah, we just say uh, itadakimasu. Ah, Japanese style. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But in, in Vietnamese they say yeah. shin moi. Shin moi, yeah. Ah. It's just like okay. polite, like let's eat. Ah, okay, okay, okay. We do it out of habit. Ah, okay. <laughs> Time to eat. No filming, sorry guys. I'll just show you the food. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, we just finished up our brunch and another short little ride here. We're at the airport terminal. This one actually connects to the MRT, so we're gonna take the train back into the city. We have more videos we need to film. Tung is very busy. She needs to film some walking videos for her channel. We've only been focusing on two cruise videos, so I've been a little selfish. We gotta film some walking videos for her channel as well. So if you haven't yet, make sure you're subscribed to Tung Shan's channel. And uh, yeah, we're actually gonna be taking the trains back. And the cool thing is with the folding bikes, you don't need a bag or anything. You just fold the bikes up and you can bring them on the train. So We'll show you guys that a little bit, but I can't talk very much when we're over there. So I think I'll add some overlay right now of when we're bringing the bikes on the train because you got to be respectful on the public transportation here. You can't talk in a loud voice and I don't want to whisper in the camera like this because it's awkward. So <laughs> here's some overlay of us going into the train with the bikes and really awesome that you can do that. That's why folding bikes are so popular here in Singapore because you can just go all over the island and you can go on a long ride if you're tired. If it's raining, you can take the train back and that's what we're doing right now. So we're gonna finish up this video here though. So a big thank you to all of our awesome supporters over on Patreon. Thanks to your guys' support, we're able to continue filming more videos like this. And big thank you to you guys. We'll see you next time here on Tubo Cruise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Also, a big thank you to our hosts for showing us around on today's route. They filmed an interview video, so if you wanna watch our interview, I'll leave that link down below. You can go check out their channel. So thanks again. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.